Thank you, Jim. And also thank you to you who are here to learn. I also want to wish you a Shabbat Shalom. You may forget that Shabbat doesn't end on Friday night. It continues through the day today. So this is a useful opportunity for us to do Shabbat in our way. I imagine most people drove here. I imagine most people turned on the lights this morning. Most people are willing to tear toilet paper and so on. Um, but that doesn't mean that we can't make this time into a Jewish experience. It's just going to be a different kind of Jewish experience. Not better, not worse, not diluted, different. One of the conceptual changes that applies to a humanistic approach to Judaism is to not see yourself as doing it less than, but as doing it differently, based on different values, animated by different concerns, and in response to new circumstances. Now, there are a lot of ways to approach the question of what is secular humanistic Judaism, how do you do it, how does it approach various issues. And historically, we've done very kind of top-down, philosophically organized. Here are our ten basic principles, and then here's how they apply. What I thought would be interesting for this learning experience is to go in some ways the opposite direction. Here's examples of how we do this and how we do that, and then we'll derive from those examples some of the basic principles of our approach. Uh, hopefully it will be a little bit more discussion oriented, a little bit more responsive, uh, but also I think some of you who have had an experience with a secular Jewish community and secular Jewish celebrations will sort of connect the dots and see, oh, that's why, and then it will make more sense. Um, so, on we go. Uh, we're going to be exploring in the morning the importance of words, how we approach Jewish literature, Jewish songs, celebration, blessings, liturgy, all of that material. And what do we mean when we say religion, Judaism, Torah, etc.? In the afternoon, we'll turn to the importance of deeds. What do we mean by Jewish values and ethics? What do we mean by mitzvot or commandments? Um, how do we celebrate what we do? And what do we do with Jewish ritual objects, some of which may maintain their relevance for us and others may be alienated from our practice or beliefs? <coughs> Excuse me. And then on Sunday morning, we turn to the importance of ideas. Uh, what do we think and believe? How do we express that? And, the particular challenge in the modern world, how do we combine people of many different beliefs into one community? Because if there are two Jews and three opinions, why should we assume that we agree on everything, let alone anything? So that's part of our challenge of creating community, especially if you come from a perspective that says you're allowed to make up your own mind. If that's one of the core ideas of a secular approach, a humanistic approach, well, if you allow people to make up their own mind, they might not always agree with you. I found this to be a challenge with my own children, because I wanted them to think for themselves, and they did, and now I have to deal with it. So, this is part of our approach as a philosophical perspective, but also there's a practical side of how do we combine all these many ideas and beliefs into one community, and we'll turn to that on Sunday morning. So let's dive